you collect contemporary art, you have a chance to know the artists because they're still living. My advice would be to just spend time. Uh, most of these things take time. And a lot of modern art, the, the viewer is asked to tell his own story. Previously on The Season Amoa, we spoke with one of the country's foremost collectors of Asian art and learned why he has given the bulk of his collection to the Amarillo Museum. This time, we're letting the art talk as we learn about the modernist, minimalist collection of Mike and Dahlia Engler. Join us as we explore color and light in episode five of The Season Amoa. I, I admire the people that were in it early enough to collect uh, French Impressionism, but you know our time was in the time we were alive, and we wanted to collect living artists doing what was um, uh, contemporary to them. Amarillo couple Mike and Dahlia Engler began collecting contemporary art shortly after returning to Amarillo in the 1990s. Since then, they have amassed an enviable collection of monochromatic paintings, glass pieces, and modernist sculptures. In January, they were named the recipients of the Amarillo Museum of Art's Achievement in Art Medal. Their collection is on view through March 31st at the museum, and the seemingly simple visuals on display definitely require some thoughtful consideration. What should the viewer get out of this work behind you? Is, or is there a deeper meaning in these works? What, what, if, I'm, if I have no experience with this kind of art, what, what, what's your advice? My advice would be to just spend time. Uh, most of these things take time. In that spirit, we're allowing the art to speak for itself this time, with occasional interjections from Mike Engler and Alex Gregory, a MOA Curator of Art. When we first moved to Amarillo, uh, Patrick McCracken was the director, longtime director here at the museum. And Patrick sort of took us under his wing. And he said, but you really need to find a focus. And so we said, well, that makes a lot of sense, but the question was, focus on what? We got kind of hooked on this monochrome art, uh, very uh, reductive. Uh, the, the Europeans call it concrete art or radical, and uh, it's quite uh, suited our sensibility and we, we got hooked on it. Well, I think color is, is the main thing. And then the other interesting thing about it was it is non-representational. You're not supposed to see a figure in it. In a lot of modern art, the, the viewer is asked to tell his own story and interact with the work in his own manner to come up with what um, he sees in the work, not necessarily the artist has uh, painted a portrait, for instance. Patrick was with us on that buying trip, and we were agonizing over it. It was one of probably our first major acquisition, and um, we just heard this uh, little voice behind us, and kind of in my ear, saying, and he said, "You know, Amarillo is yellow in Spanish." He was quite a mentor to us. Uh, in fact, we're quite sad that uh, he didn't get to see the show. Well, the other thing that's been of interest in our collecting was that we've been able to uh, get to know a lot of these artists. He's trying to actually capture light, light and color. And these paintings are uh, made of more than one color. If you look at underneath the, the top layer, you'll see whites and other different colors of yellow, et cetera, in the painting behind us. You'll see a, a variety of uh, underpaintings that he builds up and some of her glazes and some of them are uh, more opaque and he builds up a canvas just to reflect the light that hits the canvas mm -hmm. so that it will uh, give this brilliant uh, color. It's easy to walk into a room and glance around and say, oh, red painting, I can paint a red painting, you know, but 
Uh, if you spend time with this particular painting behind me, you'll see that it's not just red, that the artist has layered multiple colors that have built up this kind of luminosity in the paint so that it's uh, trying to get to the purest essence of what you might consider to be red. Alex did a fantastic job. I just marvel at how well he did in putting the art up. I love the way he's given it more room to breathe within the galleries so you can walk around and you can see paintings behind the glass, etc. So yeah. it's, to me, it's quite a treat. As a devil's advocate, someone might look at, at particularly the Marion and oh, say, yes. I can do that. I can just slap some paint on a, on a, on a canvas and sell it for $10,000 well, or $10 million. After, or <laughs> especially after I told you he does it with a roller. Um, the standard answer is if you think you can do it, go ahead. We actually have some, seen some people try to imitate him and they mm -hmm. don't pull it off very well. Panhandle PBS and The Season will follow Amarillo Museum of Art throughout 2017 and 18. Up next, head back into the vault to learn about some more of Amoa's hidden secrets.